Welcome, everybody. It is Tuesday, and that means it's time for an episode of The Bench Doctor here at the uh, Liberal Gun Club's uh, various video channels. Uh, tonight, Scott's got a uh, 1022. Um, we asked him to maybe do an episode on the 1022 because it's an extremely popular rifle. And also, I think that there'll be a future episode where we're going to talk a little bit about how to do an apple seed. Uh, yeah. 1022 is a, is a great option for, for that particular type of competition. Uh, like I said, we're live on Twitch, on Facebook, on uh, Twitter, and on our Facebook private lounge. Uh, if you're joining us in one of those channels, uh, we'll try to get to your comments if we can. I'll be sort of cruising through them uh, to see if people are making comments there. But of course, the best way to get your questions answered is to actually, one, be a member of the club, uh, and two, sign up for one of these events so you get the Zoom link so you can come and ask the questions right here in Zoom. So if you're here in Zoom, put your questions in the chat there. If you're watching us on the member Discord, there's a live stream channel there. Please put your questions there. Uh, and like I said, for the other places, uh, I'll try to cruise through them and see if I catch any questions and echo them back here. I think that's it. I think without further ado, I'm going to head it over to Scott, and he's going to show us all about the inner, inner workings of the Ruger 1022. All right. Well, uh, welcome. And uh, yeah, the 1022 is uh, usually it's one of the first rifles that uh, we recommend that people buy. At least I do. Uh, it's they're they're really reliable. They're easy to get parts for, and there's a great um, aftermarket market. Uh, you know, Volkortsen and um, other companies make uh, upgrade parts for these things. There's all different kinds of stocks. This is my son's 1022, and he wanted this folding stock on it. I haven't seen these made in years, but um, it, it kind of mimics a uh, M, uh, the, the uh, carbine, but it folds down and out of the way. But anyway, I thought I would show you how to uh, take one of these apart and the things you do if you wanted to service one or clean one. And uh, this is closer to the, uh, the actual stock that comes on an M22 with this front barrel band. Um, when, you, when you buy one, it's, it's configured more like this. I have, this is the one that I shoot most often and it's actually made by Thompson Center and it's a TCR22, uses the exact same internals. These parts are interchangeable with a, an actual Ruger 1022, but there are some subtle differences but this stock is different and it's the barrels free floated and has no um, front band on it. So I figured I'd use the one that looks the most like what uh, most people would encounter. So the first thing you're going to want to do, of course, this gun is empty. I have no 22 ammo on the bench. You can see that the, the magazine is out of the gun. The chamber has a chamber flag in it. So there is no live ammo. I'm going to remove the chamber flag and I, uh, I'm going to extend this stock out so that I can um, get to the, the screw on the bottom here. So on your rifle, we're gonna take this screw out right here underneath. And it's just, a, th this one's a simple slot, slotted screw. They may have gone to a hex head and later ones, this is an older gun. So, uh, so we take that out, remove it. Set that aside. We're going to remove this front barrel band and just slide it forward. You just need to loosen it up. You don't need, need to take the screw all the way out. It should just slide forward like so. Once you've done that, the action just pops right out of the stock like so. I'm going to set the stock aside because we don't need that. Uh, there's not much to do on those. So once you have this aside, you can slide your barrel band over the barrel and get that out of your way. Now we're going to remove this trigger. This whole trigger assembly comes off in one piece, and we simply pop out these two pins right here. And they should just push out. You shouldn't need to uh, hit them very hard with anything. See, so that one just pops straight out like so. I'd have to tap that one just a tiny bit. Get it started. 
should just push right out like so. Now you can just take your trigger out. There's your little trigger pack. And this makes it easy to clean. You can get down in there with uh, picks and brushes and things like that and clean this, clean this out. Um, this one has an extended mag release on it. That's what this is right here. Uh, it makes it easier to remove the magazine instead of reaching all the way forward. Um, you know, the, and this, this is a fairly easy upgrade to do on these guns, but it's one of the more common ones. So, and you could buy these parts, uh, Volkortsen and, um, I don't know if MC Carbo makes them, uh, but there's a, there's a few people that make these parts. So that's one way. That's the way you remove the trigger. And if you wanted to get in here and change some of these trigger parts out, this is easy to get to. So from here, now we're going to want to remove this buffer back here. You see this one is made of a, a soft urethane. Um, the original ones, I think, were quite a bit stouter. This one's been replaced. These do wear out. So, uh, and they're cheap to replace, but it just slides right out like that. There's uh, even softer ones that are kind of a, a little bit troublesome to put back in because they want to flex and it's hard to drive them in uh, through the middle of the body of the bolt carrier here. But um, that's what it is. It's just a little buffer that the bolt kind of bangs into without beating the back of the bolt carrier or the frame or the um, receiver up. So once you have that out of the way, you can now slide your bolt all the way back and you can lift it out. This is always a little bit of fun. So, oh, come on, play nice. Just cleaned this gun recently, so it's all slippery. There we go. Okay, so this is your bolt right here, and I'm going to take this apart and show you how to remove the firing pin and clean it or replace it if you need to. And then this little extractor right here is a is a troublesome part uh, on a lot of these guns. These get there's a little point there on this hook and they get rounded off over time. And a lot of the uh, ammo extracting issues are because this, this piece is worn out. So I'll show you how to replace that. So once you got that out, this is your charging handle and spring. Not much to do with that, just clean it. And then uh, on these, what some people will do is drill a hole back here in the back of the receiver, which allows you to get a cleaning rod down through the chamber side of the gun. If you don't do that, you're going to end up cleaning these from the, cr the crown side this way. So, uh, but it's, it's not going to hurt anything if you drill a hole back here. Some people like to do it to clean it that way. But from here, now you can get down in here and you can clean all of these uh, inside where the bolt is. Clean this little notch here where the extractor goes. You can get to this bolt face or this uh, the face where the chamber is and clean the chamber out. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the barrel aside. And the reassembly of this is a little bit tricky. It's not difficult, it just takes some fiddling. But so for the bolt here, um, I'm gonna show you how to remove this. What I'm gonna do, there's a little pin in here in a spring in this little gap right there. So I'm gonna hold the pin back and pop the extractor out. So I'm gonna get a really fine little punch. I'm gonna hold that, oop, that's not fine enough. Maybe this will work. I'm gonna hold that pin back and pop the extractor out. Come on. It's always difficult to do on camera because it's never as easy as it is in real life. to get that pin and spring out of your way. Nah, come on. Where's my needle nose pliers? Where'd I put those? Why does it not want to come out? Jinx. Coffee. Hey, Chris. That, 
I don't know. I don't know where that feedback's coming from. It's not me. Oh, come on, little. Maybe I'm not holding it back far enough. Anyway. But this is the most commonly worn part on this gun right here. For some reason, it doesn't want to come out. Well, we'll start. We'll take the firing pin out first. There's a little roll pin right back here. And you want to drive that out. And inside here is your firing pin. And then there's a little spring down there. So I'm going to get my uh, pin block right here. Little punch. Scott, while you're doing that, the um, question about uh, is it bad to clean from the from the crown side of the of the rifle, which is what this one questioner uh, typically does, or uh, or if you're going to do that, uh, would you use a boar snake? That with like most revolvers. So it's, you're not going to do any damage. It's just preferable to clean it from the, uh, the chamber side if you can. So here, once I remove that roll pin, I can slide my firing pin out. And a lot of people replace these with a tool steel hardened uh, replacement, but that's all there is to replacing that piece. You slide that out. And then down inside here, I'm going to pop it out. There's a little tiny spring. Uh, let me, right there. So you have just this little tiny spring and it's a good idea if you're going to be in here doing this just to replace that. You can buy a whole kit and it comes with this. So uh, if you take apart a, um, a Ruger Mark series pistol, the bolt assembly is very, very similar. There's a, an extra little piece in the, in the pistol that doesn't exist in this bolt. It's a little flattened uh, spring that goes in front of this, but it's very, very similar. So if you can do the 1022, you can also do the Mark series pistols. Hey Scott, uh, can you move the whole block up like maybe three inches? So there we go. Thank you. Yeah. So I just put that little, um, I put the little spring back in there and there's a, another, I'm going to put my thumb over it so I don't drop it. You see this roll pin here. You want to put the spring behind it. That's where that goes. And uh, set that aside. Let me see if I can get this extractor out again. I don't know why it's being difficult, but it just slips down in there. I would like to get it out to show you what it looks like. I don't know why it doesn't want to come out. Believe me, it's easy to do for some reason. This one doesn't want to play. Why not? I got the wrong tool for pushing this little pin back, I think is the problem. Is this where we tell you that we can't see what you're doing because your meat hooks? Yeah, in? yeah, it is, but I'm, <laughs> it's all right. I, well, what I'm trying to do is there's a little, little piston, a little pin here and a spring behind it, and I'm trying to push that pin back against that spring to take the pressure off of it. And then this should just pop right out. You can see here how it works. It just moves this way. Uh, maybe I'll just leave it alone, but I'll, I, I care. I keep spares of these around uh, because what happens most commonly is this little hook end of it right there rounds off over time you wouldn't think steel with brass that the brass would wear it out but it does so what happens is your gun stops uh extracting from the chamber and uh reliably and so it's usually just uh as simple as replacing this piece very simple you just push back on that piston and uh slide the extractor out replace the new one and just put it back together but for whatever reason i can't seem to get this one apart but um, anyway, put the bolt back in or the, the firing pin back in, goes back in just the way it came out, it slides right down in there. Hold on just one second, like so. 
and you can see it's you you can feel it kind of push against that little spring that's in there and put your roll pin back through roll pin you just kind of hold it all together and here's the hammer that we must have in every episode okay. so there's our firing pin back in and our bolts back together and this is pretty much all the pieces if you're just going to do a straight cleaning after a range day you really don't need to disassemble this piece you'd only really disassemble it if you want to replace the firing pin or the extractor normally i just take a uh, nylon brush like this and just clean and uh, clean it out a lot of crud you'll see crud build up down in here and then a lot of times on this bolt face right here it'll get up under this little gap this little crack uh, behind the extractor so that's you know you can move that kind of out of your way it's spring loaded and then clean back in there but you don't really need to disassemble it I just thought I'd show how to do it and this is the same way I take a can of non chlorinated brake cleaner and just spray this out really really well and then take uh, bamboo sticks with uh, patches with solvent on it and get down there and clean it um, but if you're going to upgrade a chigger you just need to take this piece out and swap the pieces uh, or if you wanted to put an extended mag release on it so this is really great for kids or people with smaller hands. You can just reach outside the trigger well, push forward, the magazine will drop right out. So a lot of people upgrade that piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together. And uh, this is the kind of the trickier part. It's not especially hard, it's just a little bit cumbersome. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is this piece uh, is your charging handle. So it goes in through the side like so, and you'll notice down inside the receiver, see if I can get a good view of this, uh, get some light on it here, but there's a little channel right here that the uh, spring rides in. The, this little point right here slides in and it rides in, so it corresponds to that. So that's how you want that aligned and I can't really shine much light on it. Let me see if I can get a uh, headlamp or something that I can illuminate that a little bit. Where I put my headlamp here. I don't have it handy. Oh, here it is right here. Let's see if I can. Uh, put that where it belongs. And I show you what I'm talking about right down in there you see where that point the spring is lined up that's where you want it to be and it'll make sense when you're looking at it, it it's the only place that spring could really ride so that sets in there and now we have to put this bolt back in and i uh, it's kind of a fun little proposition because of the way let me pull this out so what we want this to do is kind of ride in there like this. You see how this bolt, this uh, handle fits in this slot on the bolt. So it's gonna go into the gun this way. That's what we're trying to achieve. So to do that, we have to slide this in where it belongs. We drop this piece in. So now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You have to slide this spring back and lift up on the bolt and then when it's lined up, you put the bolt back down and it captures this. So, uh, and it's a little bit difficult to do. It takes a little bit of, uh, it takes a couple of tries. So Scott, um, there was a question about, would you normally remove the scope before this operation? No, not on a 22. I, the more you mess around removing scopes, the more you're going to end up re-zeroing it. And I haven't found this to be especially hard on the scope. I, it, this gun doesn't lose zero when I do this. I'm not really um, putting much force on it, so I, I don't worry too much about it. But the hard part of doing this, when you push back on this handle, it wants to kind of go crooked. So what I found is you have to kind of 
push in the middle and you slide the spring back, you slide this handle back like so, lift up on the bolt and see it wants to pop out. That's your elbow. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm trying to do this like so. That's the way you want it to be. So it rides like that. So what I did is I had to slide this handle back as far as it would go. It rides in this slot on the side of the gun. Get some light on that. Right here, you can see this slide. So you want to slide this all the way back, and then the bolt will drop right on top in that slot that I showed you. The bolt has to capture this. So to do that, you have to compress the spring by pushing back and then align those two pieces and put the bolt in. And you'll know you've got it right when it moves smoothly in the channel like so. And it takes a couple of tries, but I found the best way to do it is to have one hand on the, on the uh, lever and then maybe a punch or a screwdriver in the middle and push back using both, uh, both hands. And then you can reach down and drop the bolt on top. It'll, it'll take you a couple of tries to get it. But also, I like to grease the sides of this bolt before I put it together. 22s tend to be really filthy guns, and I don't like to over lubricate them because uh, they turn it turns into just a black crust and uh, makes it difficult to clean. But this is uh, a candidate for grease because you're going to want to grease the sides of the gun uh, or the the inside of the uh, fr the uh, receiver or the sides of the barrel um, the uh, bolt because. You know, that's quite a bit of mass rubbing together right there. And uh, so this one's pretty dry, but a little bit of grease right here isn't going to hurt anything either. Once that's back in, you can take your buffer, slide that back through like so. It, this bolt will not come back, will not come out if the buffer's there. You can play around with it, but it just, uh, you'll, you'll bit get frustrated if you try to leave that buffer in place. So once that's done, you can then take your trigger, your trigger pack, and that just slides right back in, and you can see the two holes where the, the pins go through right here, and you can see that it's aligned down through the top, and these should just go back in without too much persuasion. There's not much holding. These sit down in the frame of the gun, so there's, they don't need to be super tight. Why not? Why is it not wanting to? Maybe from the other side. From this side. You really, you really don't need much to take these apart. Uh, just a, a punch. Um, even sometimes these just pu push right out. You don't even need to tap on them. Get aligned properly. This one. So. so it's flush. So there's your trigger back in. It's out of my way. All right. And then from here. Got another question. Actually, a couple of questions for sure. you. Sure. Um, one was uh, for reinstalling uh, into the stock, some aftermarket stocks require specific lengths or types of barrel. Aside from bow barrels, what other kinds are there, at least for the Ruger OEM? Um, there are target barrels. Um, and I don't know that uh, um, all the variations that Ruger makes, but there are also takedown models of this gun. So the barrel is very simple. Well, the barrel is very simple to take off of this gun anyway but uh, the gun will come apart in two pieces. So that would be a, one, another variation of this. Um, some stocks, like I said before, don't use that front barrel band. So the barrel is free floated. So that's another consideration. Uh, but I think mostly what you're gonna run into is the bull barrel and, and probably some longer variations of this tapered barrel. And how can uh, you tell which barrel your rifle has? Well, the bull barrel is thick. It's, it's, it's going to be the same 
diameter all the way down. This is tapered. You can see it's bigger back here and it tapers down. Uh, a bull barrel, if you look at the business end of it, is going to be considerably thicker. This is uh, just a simple factory barrel, but a bull barrel is usually the same diameter all the way down and it's quite a bit thicker than the standard barrel. And you'll know when you pick it up because it's a lot heavier. Uh, they're not used, they're usually made for target uh, shooting, you know, competitions and things like that. This is more of a field gun for hunting squirrels or, you know, small game. Um, if you did want to take the barrel off, it's very simple. You just remove these two uh, Allen bolts right here. And you can see how this lug locks together to hold it, hold it in there. But, you know, if you wanted to swap the barrel out, there's not much to it. But I, I don't honestly know all the different barrel variations available from Ruger. Uh, and aftermarket, there's all kinds of longer barrels. There's barrels with uh, different sights on them. I'm sure there's barrels um, for various target applications, different lengths. You probably now could probably get one of the receivers milled for, um, you know, optics or red dots. I, I honestly don't know. I don't. This this gun is quite a bit older, you can tell, because it has that old dovetail um, mount on it. So I'm, I'm sorry if I don't know all the the answer to that question. And there was this, one there was one other question earlier on, and I'm not exactly sure what they were referring to, but they have a man liquor version, and they it was question: What is there? Is anything different about removing the stick? And I'm not sure what they referred to in terms of the stick. Huh, stock, I, I, I would guess stock probably. probably. Yeah, it might be uh, the stock. I can't speak to the Monlicker version of it because I'm not familiar with it. So I, I wouldn't be able to give you an accurate answer to the question. But usually it's pretty straightforward removing the stock on any of these 22s. There's not much holding it together. You have the screw that goes underneath here that, that attaches to the receiver. And then you have the barrel band up here. On my gun that's free floated, this one. Uh, it's another variation of the same gun. All you have is this Allen bolt down here, and that, that's what holds it into the stock. I have no barrel band on the front. So it's probably that simple, I would imagine. There's, um, there's just not much else you could do unless you had like an M1 carbine where there was a locking lug back here. But, uh, you know, that would be the other thing to look for, It'd be a little locking lug back here. But as you can see, the, the barreled action just drops right back in. And then from here, uh, I'm just gonna drop my screw back in and tighten it up. And you just wanna snug these things down. They don't need to be gorilla tight. You just snug it up and it'll like so. Hey Scott, is that a, a headlamp that's sort of sitting in the, up? there you go, thank you. Right at the camera. Okay. Uh, from here, then we take our, our front barrel band, just slides right back over, go up snug against the wood and snug this down. Uh, if you free float this thing, you're going to want to lose the barrel band. Uh, that's what free floating is, is you're removing any contact between the barrel and the stock to let the barrel float freely. Uh, usually just the thickness of maybe a piece of paper, but you don't want any contact here. Uh, that's what free floating is. We'll talk about that or maybe free float a barrel on a gun in a different uh, later date. Um, but this obviously is not free floated because it's got the band on it. So I just snug this down snug and that's all there is. That's it for a uh, Ruger 1022. I'm going to fold this out of the way to make the gun easier to handle. But that's, that's a 1022 in a nutshell. There's not much to them. Very straightforward and simple guns. Uh, you can also rebuild these magazines. These are dummy rounds. These are not real, real uh, 22 rounds, but you might want to test if you have some dummy rounds. You can see here, that's my, my release right here in front of the trigger well. That's what the extender release gets you, but you can test it, make sure it chambers, extracts, oops. So you can test all that, drop the magazine out of your way. And that's it for the 1022, unless there are any questions about it. Uh, yeah. You can, okay. 
Mike, Mike wants you to, uh, if you'd be happy enough to go back through the, uh, the bolt catch operation. He says he always has to fumble around with his. Oh, you want, okay. I'll take it apart on my other gun here and get this one out of the way. Yeah, it's, oh, installing the charging handle and the bolt, getting all that aligned. Yeah, I'll do that real quick. Let me grab my other gun. This one. <laughs> he says it might be his fat fingers too. <laughs> uh, no, it, it is a little bit... Uh, Squirrely, it's it's. Uh, I fumble with it a lot too, so it's not not you. And then um, there was also, um, if if you want to pull that other one on just briefly and show them how you fold the stock. Oh sure, yeah. All right, yeah. This is an old stock. I haven't seen these in years, but there's two little uh right here these two tabs you have to press in on both of them at the same time and then it folds back like so and then to to collapse it you do the same thing and then this folds down let me see where i can get yeah, so that's got that this folds out of your way as well fold it back you just press in and fold it back like so and yeah, it will shoot uh, with the barrel, with the stock folded as well. It's a fun little uh, little backpack gun. Uh, that's what I like about that configuration. Um, but this is the gun I used for the recent uh, apple seed shoot. And uh, it's a little, it's, as I take it apart, you'll see that it's exactly like a 1022, but with a few upgrades done to it from the factory. So. And one more while you're doing that, your thoughts on takedown versus standard models. No, oh, six of one, half dozen of the other. The takedown's really nice for a, pack, a backpack gun. Uh, I haven't noticed that they shoot any differently. They're, um, I've had the same uh, luck with both of them. So I don't if it's all a matter of what you prefer. Uh, I don't. Let's go ahead and set my stock aside. Pop these pins out. Oh, you're going to make me pull this buffer out. And I hate pulling the buffer out of this gun because it's one of the really soft ones. So you'll get to see me struggle with that. Oh, and we get to see more hammer. More hammer. Yeah, the, the buffer on this one is uh, one of those really soft urethane ones. Mike's just wants Mike just wants to see me suffer with this bolt. All right, pull that out of my way. So what he's talking about is is getting this bolt and this uh, spring back in the gun, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take it apart first. Oh, I got to take my buffer out. And this one, you can see I pounded on it a bit. Do all 1022s have buffers? Yeah. Yeah, some of them are are, are a thick, kind of um, uh, really rigid plastic. This one is a very soft urethane. Most people replace them with the softer ones. Um, and then, but that's the thing about them is getting them in here and getting them out. They flex and bend and they absorb the hammer strike and they're a lot less fun to uh, put in. So there we go. Pull that one out. See that bent down inside the receiver just makes them that much more fun. So get this one out of here. While you're beating go. on that, any reason uh, not to free flow to take down? Uh, geez. I honestly, I don't know. I, uh, if you have a, a stock that you could free float it, uh, I don't know if the standard Ruger stock really would allow you to do it. It seems like it would be a little less secure than free floating the whole action because, because of the way it breaks apart. So this slides out like so. So what, what he's asking about here is putting this assembly back together. So once again, what you're trying to do is get this handle to fit down in that slot, it goes in this way. So to do it, you have to compress this spring back 
to where it lines up with this slot like that. And it can be a little bit of a chore, as I'm sure I'll show you right here. You put this in there where it belongs, put your bolt back in, your bolt goes all the way back. So now what you have to do is slide this arm back as far as it will go into this slot right here, and then pick up the bolt and drop it so it aligns on that handle. So the way I found to do it is, let me get a longer punch. Let's take my punch. Skinny one. Or a screwdriver maybe. And you, you it's a two-handed operation. It, uh, you gotta kind of move this back you show on the screen where you're putting that screwdriver before you put your hand up? Well, I'm just putting it in front of the bolt okay. um, or in front of the spring like this. So, But I'm getting it centered on the handle because this, if you pull this back, it wants to cock sideways. Um, so I found that if you try to get in the middle here, slide this back as far as it will go and I'll hold it with your thumb. See how that moves sideways. Um, really a lot of fun and this is what mike's talking about it's it's some wrangling to get this to work and it takes a little bit of practice this one is really tight because it's pretty new but you just wanted to see me suffer i got it nailed the first time and now i have to make it hurt so there we go Oop, missed it has to ride up over the top of it. Ah, come on. And this isn't fun. Every time. Thanks, Mike. I owe you. <laughs> oh, you don't know. Oh, yes. This is just the least favorite part of this because this is this spring is brand new, so it's stiffer than normal. Yeah, okay. So slide it back or as it will go. Oh, so we're going to do this for 30 minutes. So it's well, hard to say. Um, well, the good news or the bad news? <laughs> <laughs> no. See what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah, we know what you're trying to do. Do you want the good news or the bad news? Oh, I don't care. Bad news and then the good news. <laughs> Bad news is that's actually not what he was asking you to demonstrate. Oh, <laughs> what was what was what was he asking me to demonstrate? Then I don't. I'm the bolt. The bolt catch when you lock the bolt back. He the just. Bed. He just. Oh, asked, he just. Oh well, just, then I'll just do this later. So there. Exactly. He that's just. He just asked. He just asked the wrong question. That's all. I just. Oh well. I just so, read what he wrote. <laughs> to, I can't, lock, I can't, I can't, I cannot excuse the fact that he doesn't know how to ask a question. <laughs> well, that's all right. I don't have to do this. So the bolt catch is right here next to the trigger <laughs> on the shooter's left-hand side to lock the bolt back. So what he's talking about is this bolt, you know, you want to lock it open when you're at the range to put a chamber flag in it. I just hold it back and press on that little button and that's it. It'll hold that bolt open. That's yeah, all that's, there is. That's, that's Mike, there is. And his, Mike and his fat fingers again. He can't get it in there. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> I, I, yeah. And not Mike oh. Ross. I'm talking about Mike S. No, I know. Mike, Mike Ross, uh, uh, I sat there with him during the, uh, the uh, Appleseed shoot. Oh, he was shooting a, uh, what rifle was he shooting? I don't think it was a 10. No, it was a 1022, but he had a custom stock on it. And I, uh, he nailed. Yeah, he shot so well in that thing. It just, it was amazing how good he is with that gun. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, you get to see me struggle with this again. But any more questions on the ten twenty twos? Yeah. Can you take that bolt out again? And show yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, there we go. I think that there, there it is. Yay! Yep. Yay! Yay! So there it is, right there. And it, and it didn't require a hammer, Scott. No, it did not. Well, watch me put this buffer base. This, <laughs> see, this is a really pliant buffer. That's the problem. So when you put it in there, it wants to bend and not line up with the other side. So this one's 
really not fun to put back in there. The softer buffer makes the gun run a little smoother, but they're less than fun to put in. Oh, I hate this thing. Uh, next time I'm going to have him reword his question anyway, regardless <laughs> of how clear it is. You can take it up with him in the pub. Yeah. yeah. I think that's all the questions, though. Are there any other questions, Lonnie? I'm looking at some I, other I didn't see anything. Uh, there was a, a little comment that I thought that, that Scott would appreciate. Uh, somebody thinks you're a pro, Scott. Uh, oh, that I'm reassured that a pro occasionally struggles with getting these things apart. Oh yeah, they're they're <laughs> they're uh, they're not fun. I, I yeah, it's. I want everybody, I want everybody to. He's whacking that with a hammer, so uh, don't yeah. get home. Yeah. <laughs> Buffer buffers in place now. Um, so. All right, then you put the trigger best ammo back in, and we get to see it all. Hey, yep, yep. Uh, get the trigger in there. I have a question. Um, since uh, before, you know, before we started the video, you said you also had a model model sixty. I do. And uh, yeah, compare, compare and contrast just uh, real briefly before we compare and contrast the model sixty with the ten twenty two. Yeah, from a disassembly and reassembly perspective, um, they're very they're they're probably the the uh, model sixties probably a little easier to take apart and, and put together. But if you have to get into the trigger pack on a model 60, you're going to come, you're going to invent new words trying to get those springs <laughs> in there. It is not fun. Uh, it can be done. I've done it. Uh, but it is a lot of work and it takes, uh, uh, much like an old Mark II pistol. You're going to put it down and walk away a few times before you get it figured out. Uh, but for routine maintenance, they're super straightforward. And uh, the difference is, of course, if you're not familiar with them, this is a magazine-fed gun. The magazine on a Model 60 is a tube-fed. So there's a tube that runs under the barrel, and, and there's a, a rod and a spring that pushes it into battery. And uh, the one thing I don't like about them is at some ranges, the RSOs will get mad at you for reaching in front of the gun to load it, to get yeah. your hand in front of the barrel. So you have to kind of turn them upside down. And what I found is I just tap the, tap the round with my finger and it, and it knocks it down um, the tube. But some RSOs will yell at you, Hey, get your hand out in front of the gun, but there's no other way to load the, the silly thing. Um, but I, I really, I like my, uh, I like the, uh, Model 60, and it's one of the few guns you can own in California that holds more than 10 rounds because I think the smallest tube they make on the newer ones is 14 rounds, yeah, and so the older I ones... Got, I got an old one that's got 18. Yeah, yeah mine's got, mine takes 18, um, and those are still legal to own in California, so it's one of the few guns you can kind of skate that law with. Tube-ped. Tube-ped is an exempt gun in Massachusetts, so... Yeah. All right. Well, I think we uh, I think we're gonna wrap this up then, right? I think we got all the questions answered. We're gonna watch right. Scott finish putting together his really nice 1022. That's not really a 1022. It's and, a uh, yeah, 1023 maybe. I don't know. The, this the TCR 22, if you can find one, is cheaper than a 1022, uh, and it is already got the extended mag release on it. Yeah, it's it's right here. It's already got a, a hole through the receiver for cleaning from the chamber side. Um, it's got the extended uh, charging handle, so it's it's got some nice features to it that um, most people end up upgrading on a 1022. So if you see one, pick it up. They're really good little guns. I've been really happy with this thing. Awesome. You should you should write them and tell them to, to change the buffer. Yeah, yeah. Or just I'll just go buy an old school hard buffer. <laughs> But if you're all right, so there anyway, right. that one's that one's back together. Back together, I everything works. I think we we got all the questions, though, Ed. I think. All right. Well, all right. Well, let's wrap up the show.